Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will, a good boy who eats candy. And this is a podcast. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> Thanks for you're tuning in, guys. Uh, watching or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. As always, uh, you can find us on places. The links are down there, or over there, or down there, or up there. I think or, they're always down there. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I think I am. Um, I guess if you're listening, you have to Google it, right? Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. No. Anyway, welcome. Um, <laughs> today we got some fun stuff to talk about, Kev. What are we yeah. talking about? So, uh, to give you sort of a breakdown of our show, we have the random card of the day. As always, we are going to look at the in- Ixalan intro decks. Um, yes, we, we did a little games. bit of a game with that just to sort of get our feet wet with it from a new player's perspective, see how those work out. Yeah. Uh, we also want to talk about Worlds, which was this past oh, weekend. Oh, yeah. Got some news for that. Uh, we also have our question of the week and then our sponsor in Crack a Pack, as always. Uh, but kicking it off, we have our random card of the day. This is always my favorite segment. Yeah, I, I love mean, it. It's just the best. So, this should just be the whole podcast. Everything well, else. Well, we've talked about at. Uh, 100 <laughs> yeah doing 100. on episode 100 we might do 100 random cards we're getting close it'd be kind of fun this is 64 so yeah man we're getting there there's 36 more to go we can do it look at that quick arithmetic <laughs> wink all right three two one let's <laughs> pay for that get. education <laughs> <laughs> i love this oh that's pretty cool do you want to yeah all right delusions of mediocrity uh when delusions of mediocrity enters comes into play, excuse me, gain 10 life. When Delusions of Mediocrity leaves play, lose 10 life. It's an enchantment for four, three colorless, one blue, believe it or not. Yeah, this is interesting. <clears throat> so originally from 7th edition and Urza's Legacy. Yep. Um, at rare. <laughs> what? This card is weird. <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's not good, right? No. There's no um, way that this is good. Okay, so... Is there any situation where you'd want this? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> Limited, like you wouldn't play no. it. No. Right? Like turn four. I'm trying to think. Not, how would you want this? Not. I mean, it's basically you know pay four gain ten unless they have enchantment removal, which in limited, they're not gonna side in enchantment <laughs> removal just for that. I don't think, right? I like, don't, probably not. But but you're basically taking a turn off to gain ten life. It's so it's bad. Like, it just feels terrible. Life gain. As we have argued before, not between us, between right. Alex and Alex us. Alex and I. Um, yeah, you two, really. Um, you guys argue all the time as to mm-hmm. whether life gain is a good strategy, which, generally speaking, no, it's no. not. No. It's generally Here's really bad. Unless you're a dedicated, like, Soul Sisters deck, but that's, like, a super different thing. Here's the thing. Life gain is only good, really, in two places. Mm. Limited. Yep. And it's only good in terms of incremental things yeah, like, like it's not gonna win you the game it's no. just gonna save you a little yeah. bit yeah life link is strongest and limited yeah and that's really it yeah uh but the second place is commander like i do think the soul sisters deck in modern is good too but it's, it's not a, tier one for uh, a reason right you know what i mean and the reason it's good in commander not saying you should value it over other things is there's a few cards that say hey you win <laughs> at like 40 life you win and you start with 40 in case you don't know so yeah you can win pretty easily Excuse me, there. I just had a little burp. This Coca Cola, not a sponsor, is uh, getting to me. <laughs> Can they see that in frame? I don't know. Let's look. Let's let's see. Hey. Oh, we got a lot more of the table now. Look yeah, we that. do have a lot more of the table. It's our setup, guys. We have a wide frame. Cards, yeah. candy, phones. This is our mic. Podcast notes. This is our audio interface. The podcast this audience can't see any of this. Um, you're right. You're gonna have That's to. That's awkward for you guys. Maybe you should watch our YouTube channel. <laughs> Come imagine, on. Imagine a messy desk. <laughs> imagine a messy desk with there a you, lovely tablecloth. And there you go. All um, right. Uh, yeah, this card's yeah. mediocre. Delusions of mediocrity. Th- that should have been the name of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we really dropped the ball. Man, that would have been so perfect. Yeah. Right? Maybe we'll rename it. <laughs> Rebrand everything. <laughs> um, maybe we'll start a sub-podcast called Delusions of Mediocrity. Mediocrity, where we talk about that's our spinoff podcast, the, worst the one where we just get to ramble and it makes sense. We have been talking about doing a spinoff podcast where we just talk about whatever. Yeah, would you listen? Leave your comments <laughs> down below. Um, hey, all right, um, all right, moving yep. off of that, guys. Uh, pretty bad card of the day. 
Although it's a rare. Hey. That doesn't mean much. Um, no. <laughs> Literally means nothing. Um, Only because they couldn't print too many of these, right? Like, oh, yeah, definitely. At common, if you get four of these, I think sweet. Yeah, but, sweet. But then limited games would take hours. Yeah, so, like, yeah, yeah. Precisely. They can't do that. Um, but why was this card printed in the first place is what I want to know, because it feels real bad. Yeah. Like, there's just not a saving grace to this card, really. I don't um, think. Here's a saving grace. You okay. have the option not to play it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I, I like that one. I'll take that option. Thanks. Yeah, it was good. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Way to think outside the box. Um, moving off of our card of the day, because <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, we are going to talk about the Ixalan intro decks. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you don't know, basically Wizards lately has been doing this thing where they sort of print two intro decks instead of the normal, like, four or five that yeah. it's been in the past. <clears throat> And they're Planeswalker decks, so we get sort of a dumbed down, like, more expensive and worse Planeswalker yeah. that sort of fronts each deck, and then that sort of is the basis for the deck itself. So, mm -hmm. uh, the deck I had is Jace's deck, uh, which is basically blue-green Merfolk with a little bit of tempo. I don't really... It's a really weird deck, because you'd think it... You want to play it like a blue deck, but it's actually right. more of, like, a creature-based, you know, 1-1 one, one counters kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, it's a little bit odd, uh, but what deck did you play? I played uh, Whateley, Whatley. That's, it just sounds like I'm from Boston I'm going to get up, which is something I've never done. Whoa. You're breaking the, the fourth know, wall, I'm Kev. something weird, guys. I'm sorry. Ooh, um, yeah. Oh, you forgot to bring the decks. <clears throat> forgot to bring the decks. Um, yeah, <laughs> Hotly. Wait, we still don't know how to say her name. I played the, no clue. Uh, <clears throat> the scary lizard deck. Scary lizard is what deck. I'm coining it. Heck yeah. Uh, it is a Boros themed just dinosaur hit stuff. Beat in the stuff face. up deck. Yeah. Um, which it worked. You won both games. Yeah, but eh. honestly, um, though, like, okay, we're trying to take. I mean, this is weird for us because we've been playing magic for years but you were trying to look at this through the perspective of a new player how does it work for a new player is it a good intro to the game does it sort of fit that mold uh because that's really who it's for right like it's yeah. not for experienced players um it might be fun just to pick it up as like a joke but the games aren't that interesting like i didn't True. think we did have a few interesting <laughs> combats uh yeah. i will say yeah that's and fair. we got to talk those out which was really nice because we were sort of step by step going through our thought processes as mm -hmm. we were doing it mm -hmm. um which is something if you are a new player and you're not used to doing that i would suggest doing that yeah um, um, because somebody can critique and sort of give you advice on what you might be doing wrong or you know compliment on something that you're doing correctly um, yeah, I think um, so. new players with friends who've been playing a while would benefit from that, mm -hmm. just playing against them. Yep. And you're exactly right. They get to kind of ask them, here's why I'm thinking this. And yeah. That helps. Um, but yeah, you're exactly right. The games, you know, you're not going to buy this car, this deck for the cards in it. There's no. nothing valuable in it. No. Um, not at all. Um, yeah. And the, the games aren't, like, very enticing. They they come yeah. they come down to combat, which is can be fun and a lot of standard does, but it's yeah, and it's I mean at the mm -hmm. at the core though these decks were designed to do very specific mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. um, and be fairly evenly matched, which I will yeah. say on that front, I think they were fairly evenly matched. I, I mean you definitely yeah, yeah. won both games, but they were both close. They um, were yeah yeah. It came down to a single combat Here's phase for the most part. Walker. Um, and you just happen to have combat tricks. And to that point, what I don't like about these two specific decks mm. is the blue-green Jace deck spends a lot of its time placing 1-1 one -one counters on things and building up your creatures and ideally overall outpowering the opponent, sure. which is fine. However, because he has combat tricks, if he has three mana... <laughs> He can just win. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that's a little weird, and that's obviously something that, like, as the player opposing that, you kind of just have to think about and plan around. Sometimes, though, it still is just the right choice to just go in all out and attack. Definitely. And you just lose. So, like, feels a little weird to me that there's so much setup time involved with this deck and much less setup time involved in that deck. Yeah. That one, you just play your creatures and you swing out. And there really is no setup. Um, <laughs> yeah. You just play a guy... You don't even you don't mess with one one counters. They just are what they are, and you yep. you turn them sideways. Um, it's it's a Boros deck, right? Yeah. There's not a ton of ideas to Boros that you need to worry about. Uh, that being said, um, the synergy in this deck is very strong. Mm. Uh, you've got 
cards that work off having dinosaurs. If you control dinosaurs, you get to have a little extra power, which is sweet. Um, there's one copy of a card that makes dinosaurs cost one less to cast, which is awesome. Um, so it teaches you a lot about the synergies. I know your deck kind of has the same ideas. Yeah, they both were very synergistic mm-hmm. in their own right. Um, and I and think again, that's mine great. being focused around 1-1 one, one counters, yours being more just dinosaur focused, the mm-hmm. sort of tribal theme. And that does work for a new player. I like that because yeah, it teaches likewise. you a lot about synergies and how important they are to winning games, um, which there are always like so many pillars to deck building and synergy can be one of those, Yeah, um, I think. So I agree. I think the synergy is great. I think from an intro perspective, mm-hmm. not bad. No, I think they're good. fine. Like they're I like just these more decks. than um, Amon Kets. Amon Kets. Yeah, Amon Kets were bad, I thought. Gideon's was real bad. Yeah um liliana's was okay but it yeah. just i don't know it didn't feel all that great this feels like uh, like when i was playing the merfolk deck i felt like i was championing a merfolk deck like it felt okay. really fun and things like that your deck felt when i was opposing it felt a lot like okay i'm just playing against these big stompy dudes which is exactly yeah. what it should be yeah and so i think it fits the mold really well and they were very evenly matched i like that about these um much more than i cat for sure um yeah so going into some key cards, though, uh, do you want to start us off with some of the ones from your deck? Sure. So uh, some ones that really stood out. Mm-hmm. Territorial Hammer Skull is the first one. Um, this is a card that is standard legal and limited legal, so mm-hmm. you could draft it. Uh, it is a 2-3 for 3. Whenever Territorial Hammer Skull attacks, tap target creature and opponent controls. It's a really simple effect. Super good, it's too. been printed a few times, um, but it's, it's just very strong. Uh, to have it on a dinosaur to work with um the cards that are synergistic just awesome yep um so to that end with synergy uh pterodon knight <clears throat> a three three for four <laughs> pterodon knight has flying as long as he control a dinosaur awesome yeah because you're probably gonna do that <laughs> uh as well as t- <clears throat> oh lord tylanali's knight yeah that one tylanali's tylanol's knight whenever tylanol's knight attacks if you control a dinosaur Tylenol's Knight gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Um, it's a two, oh gosh, that's so fun. It's a 2-2 two, two for two, but if you swing, it could be a 3-3, three, three. Uh, which is fine. You're paying two mana for a 3-3 three, three during combat. It's good for limited, also limited legal. Um, that's really the only place that's good. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's fine. So those cheap guys, since you're a Boros deck and you're probably playing to the lower end of the curve with your creatures, having those guys consistent perfect yep um there are a few flyers in here as well there's a dinosaur with vigilance although this is not uh what's with these names yotley's snub horn uh yeah (laughs) the dinosaur with vigilance the two two uh for two with vigilance is not standard legal so you'll never see it is Um, it not mm -mm. Uh, no bummer it should be it's simply decent yeah Yeah. Uh, i also played with raptor companion a lot but this card's terrible um yeah, I really didn't play any of the top end crazy stuff. Yeah. Burning Suns Avatars in here, Goring Ceratops is in here, Bounded Horncrest is in here. That's a great card. That's a very good limited yeah. card. I so think. it's a five five for four. It can't attack or block alone. Solid. In the dinosaur deck, that's perfect. I uh, love it. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh let's I'll talk about the planeswalker a yeah, little bit yeah. before you get into yours. Okay. Uh Hotly herself, Whateley, who should room uh is a uh planeswalker for six four colorless one red one white uh her plus two put two plus one plus one counters on up to one target dinosaur you control and minus three target dinosaur you control deals damage equal to its power so target creature you don't control then her ult her minus seven dinosaurs you control get plus four plus four until end of turn kevin i think it's a good card no it's a bad card correct um (laughs) not good yeah uh you're basically paying for a pump spell or a kill spell for six yeah (laughs) it's really bad i mean like we get these are intro decks but it feels so bad playing a planeswalker like that it's terrible um Um, her ult is an anthem effect yeah if it was an emblem awesome be great but it is not um yeah we both of us didn't actually get to play our planeswalkers i fetched it out and had the opportunity to play it but at the time it didn't really sit correctly right, wasn't the right it was not no. the right play so i did not play it um 
and that I think is just a testament to how bad they are, right? Like, yeah, I do like the the art is cool. The art's great, and I think the art on Jace is pretty good too. Um, yeah. So to sort of segue into the Jace deck, I will read Jace Ingenious Mind Mage. Oh, uh, four and two blue for a five loyalty planeswalker. I just want in the next onset, Jace. I'm not full of myself, Mage. <laughs> They need to stop printing Jace's for a bit. I love Jace. He's my favorite, but they need to not do it. There's like seven now, right? There's a lot. I don't know exactly. Keep reading. I'm going to count. All right. Um, so for plus one, you can draw a card. Pretty simple, standard effect, and useful. Uh, you can also, for plus one, untap all creatures you control, which helps you in combat um, or after combat. And then its alt is minus nine. Gain control of up to three target creatures, uh, which, I mean, is a powerful effect, but you have to get you have to activate Jace's plus effects at yeah. least four times. <clears throat> yep. And like by that point, hopefully you've won the game. <laughs> like, and if not, then I mean, you know, um, yeah, it's just bad. <laughs> I don't know what happens. You just you've lost. <laughs> um, so looking at some of the creatures of this, obviously it was a Merfolk based deck. Uh, the only creature that really stuck out that was not a Merfolk uh, is Air Elemental, which is just a four four for five flying creature. Uh, super good and limited usually I mean it, it's usually decent statted and so it works out pretty well it was decent here but because of your tapping guy yeah it kind of like just didn't do anything um, it swung in maybe once uh, other really interesting cards um, the 1-1 one, one for 1 speaker how do you say this I'll read that out Kumenas. yeah that uh, Kumenas speaker it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 green and it gets plus 1 plus 1 plus one plus one as long as you control another merfolk or an island so yeah, it's really awesome. for the most part it's a two two for one and um, this is also standard legal so you and it is standard also. legal yeah yeah and it's i mean it's pretty strong in the merfolk deck um so that actually came in handy jungle delver i it's not a good card <laughs> it's a one one for one uh yeah. with the ability to for three and a green to put a one one counter on it which isn't good but i I think in these decks it's like on par for power level and it's like okay it gives you somewhere to sink some mana so that's okay um yeah (laughs) i mean it's just not good no it's really not it's really not um jade guardian actually do love this card um and i do think this is pretty good and limited it's a two two for four which sounds real bad however it has hexproof and when it enters the battlefield, you put a 1-1 counter on the target Merfolk you control. Yeah, that's nice. Um, it's really good. Uh, again, playing around with all these 1-1 counters, if you just have a Hexproof guy and stack them on there, it's really hard to deal with that. It's true. Um, so that was really, really helpful. Shapers of Nature is a card that I played but didn't really get to use, but that is super, super powerful. It's very strong. Is that um, standard as well? It is also, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, indeed. it's one green, one blue, and one mm-hmm. colorless for a three three. So three three for three is already pretty decent. Um, but for three and a green, put a one one counter on target creature, so it's a mana sink. Uh, in addition, for two and a blue, you can remove a one one counter from a creature and draw a card. Uh, so you can actually get some card draw off of this and <clears throat> sort of fuel itself. It's expensive to do both, but it true you're gonna have other ways to do the one one counters. Yeah. Um, and I mean for an engine not bad. yeah exactly it is 100% an engine card um, the last creature I want to talk about Herald of the Secret Streams or Herald of Secret Streams excuse me it's just a 2-3 for 4 uh, but it also states that creatures with 1-1 one, one counters on them that you control can't be blocked Yeah, uh, which did come in handy in racing you at one point absolutely he um, that's definitely really quite a good. threat um, yeah. Um, yeah. super good uh, I had to throw it away though in the game and that was sad it's true uh, River, River Herald's Boon uh, is two for an instant. It's sort of the only combat trick-ish of this uh, deck, but yeah. it basically says put a 1-1 counter on target creature and then put another one on target merfolk you control. Um, so you can sort of stack those however you want, and it did come in handy as just sort of an efficient way to spend mana sometimes. Yeah. It didn't swing combat in my favor ever, but I could see how it could. Yeah, and um, it definitely made one of your lesser merfolk a threat. Yeah. I think it was Jungle Delver, actually. Um, Could have been. Castaway's Despair is basically the only removal spell-ish in this deck. Uh, Three and a blue for an enchantment. Tap target creature, and it doesn't untap. Classic blue card. Uh, Didn't really work. No. Because you got to untap. I had a combat trick that says, give everyone extra power and untap them. That was annoying. (sighs) Yeah, Um, sorry about it. 
And the last card I want to talk about, which is not in the like main set, these are this card is only in the uh, the deck, is return up to two target creatures to their owner's hand, uh, and then search your library for Jace, basically. Yeah. Uh, for four and a blue, grasping t- uh, current, excuse me, um, which did help. I mean, that's how yeah, I was able to definitely. search out Jace, and it also sort of tempoed you out for a yeah. turn or two. But again, it didn't win the game. <laughs> like, it's these decks. Um, if you are an experienced player don't get them um if you're an inexperienced player i would recommend these decks but not always every dual deck that they make or every uh intro deck that they make yeah does that make sense yeah i wouldn't recommend Amonkhet. these i would recommend they seem decent they're they're fine yeah they were fun enough i think um they get give you enough synergy to really like learn magic yeah i think i think so so they're fine. Um, I would like a little more interaction, like across the table, maybe. But yeah, because it fine. really did just come down to combat yep. most of the time. Um, but I do think that that's sort of one of the first things you need to learn in Magic, so it makes sense. I'm okay with it. Um, the decks were much better than Amon Cat, that's for sure. Um, okay. Anything else you want to talk about for the intro decks, though? No, I am set. All right. Then let's move on. Two Worlds 2017 Woo-hoo. World Championship was this past weekend. In uh, Boston. Boston. Massachusetts. Um, <laughs> Home of, uh, I don't know. Uh, Huey. Yeah, and <laughs> and Clam Chowder. That too. And the world's greatest football team. <laughs> I actually, uh, if you follow us on uh, Instagram... Oh, yeah, you'll, you did an accidental post. You'll know I was in Boston last week <laughs> uh, watching the Pats game. That was hilarious. And I thought I was on my Instagram. Turns out I was not. I was on It Resolves Instagram. I was wondering what had happened, and I was just like, oh, well, maybe it's just a joke from Will or something. Maybe it's just being silly. Wasn't a joke. I wanted to put that on my account. Did you take it off of ours, or did you leave it? I think I took it off. Well, look. I think I did. You You continue with your story. I might have just commented, what? You did do that. I know you did that. Yes. <laughs> um, it might still be on there. But yeah, um, my wife and I went to the game. Oh, it's still on there. You can go oh, like nice. it nice. if you want. You see uh, just pictures of like Brady jerseys, right? Somebody also asked if they want to trade for my Liliana of the Veil. The answer is no. Sorry. Tell them to, to fork off. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there's a Gronk jersey. There's a Brady jersey. This is it, guys. There's, there's... You can't see this, but it's here. That's Gillette Stadium. Yeah. Whoop whoop! All right, any three of you liked it, so good job. Yeah, be there. we lost that game. Um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, worlds, worlds was great. <laughs> uh, I didn't watch any of it. Yeah, we didn't get a chance to. No. Um, the plan normally for like big tournaments and stuff, we try and sit down and watch yeah. at least part of it we have to get together um, and I like to play some magic it. and watch uh-huh. it. But it's been busy lately. Schedules have not been lining up as easily, yeah. and so um, we had, we didn't get the chance to, unfortunately. Ooh, but we bummer. do know yeah. that Huey Jensen took home the W. Took home the win. Good for Huey. Hey, it's Title Town, man. Boston man. is Title Town. Celtics, Pats, Red Sox, and now William Huey Jensen. Man, good. I'm so happy that he won it. <laughs> honestly, so there you go. There were 24 players, uh, mm-hmm. many of which are names you would recognize, things like Reed Duke, Yu Watanabe. Yeah. Um, if a you, lot of really big people. If you follow professional magic at all, you will know them. Um, Shouta Yasuoka, I think, was in there, if I'm not mistaken. Shouta. Um, so I'm actually gonna pull up the little thing. Cool. We had the little thing. Uh, yeah. So it being eventful, besides the winners, um, it's a three day tournament, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So it's Friday, yep. Saturday, Sunday, and I have the yep. breakdown. Actually, hold on one second. Uh, good. That's what I was okay, gonna yeah. talk about. So the formats for Friday, uh, they did three rounds of XLM Booster Draft and four rounds of Standard Constructed. Saturday was the exact same thing. Uh, Sunday, they started off with XLM Team Sealed. So it was a Team Sealed event, which if you don't know, Sealed Six Packs Team, you're with other people. You have to win too many games out of that. It's a whole thing. It's a whole other format, basically. Yeah, it's Um, fun, but it is very challenging. Yeah, it is very challenging. Um, And then they also did some standard constructed uh, for the top four playoffs uh, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So that was basically it. But here's what we realized, because we looked back at the past year, um, and they included modern constructed, which I'm sure this has been talked about already, but we just want to harp on it for a bit. Um, It's our opinions. 
Modern was not included. No other format other than standard or standard draft or sealed, whatever, was included. Um, yeah. And that's something I don't really like, personally. Yeah. And that doesn't come down to, oh, Kevin hates standard, whatever. Yes, I do hate standard. But <laughs> um, but I just say that now just because it annoys it's you fine. more than anything. I've become jaded. Um, You've calloused me. A. Uh, but my thing is... If you're playing at Worlds, mm -hmm. Standard is definitely an important format. You need to be good at Standard to be at Worlds. Yes. However, should you not also be good at other formats? Should you not be tested at other formats, I guess? Yes, but he here's my thing. Okay. Here's, here's my argument for ignoring the Eternal formats. We haven't planned this argument at no, all, by the way. No, I was going to make it, then I decided to hold it and wait. Mm. So, really... The world's best magic player needs to be good at skills and magic. Yeah. Not necessarily just be good for a certain time in magic, which yeah. you could say standard, I guess, is. It is. But I argue <laughs> so is every other <clears throat> format. There's it. There's seasons to those as well. Yeah. So but I what, think, do you, what are the skills that you get with so this So what I feel like, so here's my thing. Standard is a very particular format in that it focuses on it's more, I would say, sort of on the mid-range creature-based de decks. It's like, if we're looking can. at specifics and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, can be, definitely. I think right now it definitely is. I don't think, I mean, there's a, is that incorrect? I think there's combo decks. I mean, I'm sure right there's now. okay combo decks, but I feel like mid-range um, creature-based decks are probably No, 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 that's the definitely the, the um, most common. My thing is, though, like, it just seems like you should be tested in different formats because different formats offer different ways of playing. Um, and do True. offer different interactions that you know you're not worried about mana leak or cryptic command in standard because it's not in standard. In fact, there's not that many great counter spells. There's a few, but like you I know, mean, it's just it's stuff like that where you sort of have to play around certain things and you have to sort of know your know your stuff and know your format. And I feel like that's an important thing to test at Worlds. Well, personally, I mean, if not a mana leak, there's something else though. If not a cryptic command, there's something else. I mean, there's I'm just always, saying. There's always that card that you need to be aware of. Sure. Fatal Push. That's one that's still in standard right now. It is still in standard, you gotta, absolutely. you got to plan for Fatal Push. Well, not you plan for it, but do. you got to play around it, really. Yeah. Expect it, I'll say. Um, there's, in control decks, you know you're going to run up against counter spells. Here's the thing. You just take the names off of certain cards, and the concept <laughs> still exists, right? Sure. There's still Sensor, which is a really bad uh mana leak but it's really bad mana leak um, but it's still i mean yeah it's the same i get that and you do still have to play around it mm -hmm. i just mm -hmm. i feel like because different formats offer different things that's why they should have at least a couple a variety of formats at a world championship he here's why i think like uh, here's why i think it's fine okay so standard is the most played format worldwide yeah hands down competitively down. played for sure yeah, I mean, it's the most played, like, period. Commander might be the most played. No, I mean, there's... I don't know. I'm, not, I'm just guessing. But... I think Commander is the most, like, widely Accepted. loved. Yeah. Like, I don't think m many people who have played Commander don't like dislike it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did Except I, us. Did, that make sense? did we dislike Commander? We didn't dislike no, it. No, I like Commander. I just don't play Commander much because yeah, I don't, I don't have the time to make a good deck. True. I really don't. It's yeah. That's like a... Uh, an artisan's magic, <laughs> um, but there's a whole other thing. Uh, true. So it's like Ixalan. It's dinosaurs with <laughs> random dinosaurs stuff with lasers. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Sorry, I got you off track. I did I not mean to. What I was saying now. Oh you yeah, you're agreeing standards, that standard is standard is the most mildly played. Good. So yeah, it's the most relatable, quote unquote. You could say that, but it's also the most competitive in terms of numbers. Yeah, which yeah, yeah. Ergo makes it competitive. Sure. Um, you had different variations on that constructed so you need to build a deck you need to understand matchups you need to understand the meta those are skills that are the same in every format they just i mean that's again fair. change the name of the cards yeah. there's limited which is the hardest format yeah. in magic yeah because you don't come with a built deck you have to build it with what you get yeah right there's you can just be past nothing <laughs> yes you can just draft bad you can Draft very well, but deck build poorly. There's so many skills that go into limited. Sure. Then you've got your sealed, and then team sealed. Yeah. So with sealed, I mean that's that's a whole different kind of limited. Yeah, it is. Aspect. I enjoy sealed a lot. Um, I uh, what do I think is 
Maybe that's harder than team draft. sealed. No, just sealed. Just it's sealed. Because sealed, sealed is get... kind of difficult. I feel like because my thing is when it comes to draft, you're looking at maximum fifteen cards, most of which you know are not going to be like if you're looking at your opening pack, right? Mm-hmm. You're looking at fifteen cards. You have to determine what the best card in the pack is. Generally, yeah. that's a pretty like objective thing. It's like mm-hmm. okay, this is clearly the best card, or there's these are two or three of the best cards you know they're sort of on an even level which one do i want to take which one do i want to start to build around then the hard part becomes reading signals which is definitely a huge part of draft because you do have to stay in what's open and also draft around what people are passing you um so that's probably the most difficult Mm -hmm. part but when it comes to looking at the packs and getting the best card it's usually pretty simple uh it can be i think i think you need to determine what's best for your deck all the time and that's what (laughs) yeah bread bread there you go yeah. That works. <laughs> right. Bombs, remove, you know. Yeah. Look it up. Google it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so limited But I think card. draft is easier than sealed, sealed? personally. Um, for me, yeah. and that might be incorrect I, for No, I think but... I'd agree. Um, I think I'd agree. Having done both, I'd yeah. say draft is probably better or harder, easier. When I, was trying to I say feel like easier. it's harder to make decisions easier. in sealed just because your pool is bigger. Yes, and team not sealed, bigger you necessarily, have but... two Two separate pools. Well, yeah, they yeah. come together. You have twice the pool. You have a lot. What I'm pool. trying to say. What are you trying to say? In summation, I think it was enough because it it represents well the skills that the world's best player would have to have. Okay. In terms of constructed understanding the meta, I will concede that it does. I just I think I just have a knot going on with uh, wizards around yeah, the fact that you standard. Do. I just don't you get why do, they're buddy. like, hey, let's not care about modern. Or any other format other than standard. I'd say modern doesn't make him as much money, and I think that's why. Right. That's like they're a business though. Why? I get their business, they have to make decisions off At of that, point. but there also is a large play group that does like modern. Oh yeah. I'd and say so most of the world like, likes modern. Not care about it. It's, it's kind of annoying. I don't think that they I it's not that they don't care about it. It's more that they are trying to rebrand a bit, right? Maybe not rebrand, but like shift their market right maybe magic I don't know. arena may oh god i know I just, I, <laughs> i'm not i i don't like it but it makes sense i'm not confused. i just don't like that they're focusing only on standard that's my only yeah, gripe I'll i think that. that like i agree with that a great thing about magic is that there are different formats and for yeah. them to not really care not not like not to the point where they're just like oh modern doesn't exist it's anymore. just that they have it's a just, favorite child they do have a favorite child yeah. and they make that very very prominent yeah. Like it's the it's one with just... the scholarship. <laughs> That's their favorite job. <laughs> I don't know. That's uh, my sort of gripe. Modern dropped out of college and works at a Starbucks now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. I mean, that's just my take on it. It's. I understand. I agree that standard and like, you know, no matter what format you're in, you're being tested on roughly the same values, I guess, and sort of yeah. interactions and things. So I buy that. It's just, I don't know. I miss other formats. <laughs> That's all. Oh, I I love modern. Modern's modern great. is way it's more probably, interesting to me than standard. Yeah, sure. it's probably the best format in terms of competition. Um, yeah. Commander's way and too silly. One-on-one commander's just... Ugh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, modern's Legacy is great, but not that accessible, and Vintage is even less so. Yeah. Um, so Modern, I think, is the best. I think Frontier could become something like that, but give it two years. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of time for Frontier to really flesh out. Yeah, it, um, it, need, it needs time, um, but I think it could be good. Yeah. Uh, but it's not a driving force behind Magic right now, yeah. and neither is Modern. And Modern kind of hasn't been. You know what? It's interesting, though, because Modern was for a while when like Splinter Twin was in and things like that a couple years ago well i'll even go so it wasn't necessarily the the driving force but it yeah. was a very prominent you know featured sort of format well, i'll go as far to say as birthing pod days birthing pod definitely i'm saying like, at its latest point though mm-hmm. i feel like the last time that it like took over as one of the f- bigger formats was sort of when splinter twin was just being, yeah that was you know like what I mean? the topic on everyone's table yeah and i think since then there haven't been any bannings or anything like that. Well, that are besides no, Probe. Besides Probe, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But Probe was huge, though. Probe was a huge banning. Have but we ever also, talked about why Probe was big on podcast? I think we podcast? did. Okay. Um, if you don't know, it made too many decks work too easily. Um, it was also free, so any deck could play it. Um, combo decks, 
had a field day with that card. Oh yeah, they and just then just lost it all up with they... probes. <laughs> Let me see your they hand. Just probed... I don't even care. Draw a card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's probe. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. Um, so but my thing is, and this sort of leads me into a sort of tangent of mine that I actually did want to bring up. Okay, is talk to me. Modern. If we're looking at modern stats and things like that right now, modern is in an actually very healthy place that there's a variety of decks being played all around the same sort of percentage level at the like eight to nine percent. Death Shadow is down from its crazy hiatus and all that, okay. or its crazy uh, high point. Um, it's down to like eight percent or something. It's not Holy even the most crap. played. It's not the most played deck anymore. That's almost half. Yeah. Hold on. Um, at least on MTG Top 8 is where I looked. That's where I pull my numbers, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so it's in a healthy right. place. We're getting a lot of variety in the way of deck lists and things like that, which yeah. if you look at the last few Top 8s at GPs and things like that, you will notice that there is a huge variety of decks with Ad Nauseum coming out on top in different mm-hmm. cases. I know 8-Rack a while back came out on top. Uh, there's a lot of different Death stuff. Death Shadow is almost being... It's almost the same percentage of the field as Valakut. There you go. Um, as Valica. So I think what the point of it is, all the statistics are telling us that Modern is in a really, really healthy place right now. A competitive place. Competitive and healthy place. And I think there might be a correlation between it being in a really healthy place and not many people being that interested in it. Here's my deal. Okay. When there is a deck that is breaking a format, everybody flocks to that deck Uh, and freaks out about it. Hence Splinter Twin. You're the net deck argument. This is what you're doing right now. It's sort of the net deck argument. People love it because there's a deck that they can play that they feel they're breaking the format. There isn't a deck like that right now in Modern. Hmm. You're saying Modern's difficult right now. because Modern is difficult because Hmm. there are just a lot of evenly matched decks. Ah. So I feel like do you know because it, it's in a healthy place, nobody cares about do, it. Do you know what? Excluding last season's <clears throat> format is like that most of the time. Hmm. Standard. I don't know. There's usually not an outright. There's usually not an outright. Not an outright winning. Is there usually deck. not? Yeah. Like besides. So let's look at past formats because or like past standard blocks. Sure. Um, Theros. It was Esper definitely took over right while theros was the only um, well but then devotion took over after right, that right while um, theros was the only um um uh set from that block printed yes yeah, yeah, yeah. For, and then devotion took for over after two that. three months whatever the time frame is um yeah right yeah. now for like a month or two it was ramen up red which was hilarious um but it definitely that's, didn't take no, over that's still the most played is it still yeah it's not the winningest but it's the most played <laughs> which is funny why <laughs> it's cheap well it is very cheap budget deck um i mean okay i guess i would argue that yeah you're probably right there hasn't been a deck that it's taking over right except but, for teamer and yeah. Mortal vehicles yeah and then marvel at one point until well, the that's band. what i meant teamer oh, oh the marvel i thought you were talking yeah i guess the same deck um i don't know it's just i feel like there's something there though i i I feel people like people just kind of don't care about modern right now. As no, much. you could have a point because they don't they don't know what to play. Yeah, um, just play what's fun. Really, there's That's any options open. Do. Just try things. I think modern's in a really healthy place right now, yeah. but I think because of that, a lot of Maybe people are because getting away from it. Since there's not a deck, all the net deckers are gone, so the cancer's gone. <laughs> <laughs> right, the cancer's gone. Right, right. Uh, who's that channel I don't like? There's a lot. <laughs> oh, he whines. What's his I name? I know who you're talking about, but I'm going to let you. Desolator Magic. Yep. Him. Oh, man. Please comment below everyone who likes him. Do it. Lather me with hate. <laughs> <laughs> it's my moisturizer. You really don't like him. I mean, no. I don't have any feelings and crazy feelings towards him. He's not my favorite. I, but... I don't like him because all he does is complain and he doesn't offer any solutions. <laughs> he just whines. <laughs> he has a lot of clickbait, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we're a baby channel. We're no, a baby channel. No one would attack us. <laughs> Everybody. Do it. Do it. Um, yeah, no, I don't like Desolator for a lot of the same reason that people say they don't like net deckers, just because they complain, complain, complain yep. about something that's not really a problem. Just get good. Yeah. 
Why didn't my freaking brew weird ATOG affinity combo deck not work? It's funny you say ATOG. We're going to get to that in a minute. I've, I, I played it and tested it on my kitchen table eight times against my brother and beat him. <laughs> Why isn't it working? Well, because you don't have good data, dummy. <laughs> Do your your sample work. size is a bit limited. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <The same. laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, uh, I could go at length as to yeah, why I don't yeah. like crappy channels like that. Uh, Kevin. Yeah. Is that all you want to say about Worlds? We didn't really talk about Worlds. We, we sort of ranted about <laughs> other stuff. Um, congratulations to Huey. He is a fantastic <laughs> player. He's had a great <laughs> season. Um, yeah. Is he in the Hall of Fame? Um, he got inducted last year, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, good. I he so. needs to be if he isn't, so that's yeah, why I was Yeah, I think he's in there. Um, good for him. I'm super happy that he won Worlds. Uh, my man Reed didn't make it. I was Reed sort of behind Reed. Reed. I of, like Reed. Of the Magic players I'd like to meet in my life, Reed. Duke. Reed is like number one. Chris Pakula, Reed Oh, Duke, yeah. Uh, LSB. They're my top three. Yeah, they're up there for me. Yeah. I'd like to meet Yuya, but it'd be hard to talk to him. True, he does speak um, Japanese. Yeah. English too, but not as much. Not as well. He'd probably be very. I've heard he's very nice. Oh, I have too. Yeah, very yeah. humble. I've seen like an interview with him. everyone. He's, like think, the nicest guy in the world. Anyone who's played him is like, yeah, he's the best. He's so scary, <laughs> and he's always like, Huey was very challenging. Uh, he's a great competitor, and I am honored to be uh, playing against him at this tournament. I'm always like, you're such a nice he's guy. He's such a sweetheart. And um, you could rip anyone in half if you were playing Magic. Yeah, yeah. I associate Yuya with Jund. Do you? Yeah. Because I guess he was like the captain of John Dwight he was, for a while. He is insanely good with John. I mean, he's insanely good at everything. But okay. like, he's just, uh, I think the first time I saw him, I, I watched him play modern John. And he played like, mm -hmm. that was when Bloodbraid Elf and all that was legal. And so he was just wrecking house with John. Bloodbraid Elf. Man. Oh, be still Should they heart. unban Bloodbraid Elf? No. No. Um, no, don't do it. Yes, yes, yes. If they banned every other black card. <laughs> Just every single one? Everyone. All right. That way there can be no Jund. <laughs> no Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize is banned. Correct. No I Thoughtseize. Like no Blightning. No, uh... Blightning really doesn't get played that much anymore. But it's so fun! I mean, it's a classic card. Zap, that should have been an discard. Iconic Masters. God. Other things we could talk about for way yeah. too long. We are really going ham on this one. Um, <laughs> all right, let's go to the question of the week. Congratulations oh, sure. to Huey, though. Mm. Honestly, really stoked that he won. Um, question of the week this past week was what is your favorite legendary creature um, what's and we yours had, by the way I don't know man I was trying to think about it and there are a couple on this list that got me thinking um, I like Geist of St. Draft Ge Geist is good um, Geist is fun I don't know well we'll talk because I'll point some out on here cool 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 um, all well not all of the gods the Scarab God and the Locust God were on here uh, which of my of the gods, I think the Locust God is my favorite. It's not really the best, but I like it. No, but we didn't do best, right? Yeah. Your favorite? Uh, OG Thalia, awesome. Um, Atogatog. <laughs> hey. Uh, Brago, which is one of my favorites. I oh, love man, Brago's Brago. good. Um, the Blink King. Yeah, it's just so good. Um, Dude, Brago's nice. Somebody put Isamaru and then put a little winky face. If you don't know... It's from Champions of Kamigawa. It's one white for a 2-2 two -two vanilla creature. <laughs> it's the best creature. But it's a legendary creature. <laughs> Sorry, second best creature. Does someone put Stormcrow? No, nobody put Stormcrow. Uh, somebody put Edgar, uh, Markov. Hmm. Progenitus is another good one. I do like Progenitus quite a lot. niv Mizzix is up there. Ooh, the, uh, the Dragon Mind? What is his name? The Hive um, Mind? What? The Hive Mind? Spine Mart Overlord. Uh, niv Mizzix is on there. <laughs> Norin is on there, the little goblin guy. I like him. Uh, Krinko is also on there. Mob boss. Krinko's fun. Yeah, Krinko's pretty cool. good. Uh, Baby Jace got a couple votes, actually. Baby Jace is up there for me. Oh, by the way, uh, if you count both sides of Baby Jace, or, yeah, both sides of Baby Jace, you get uh, 10 Jaces printed. I was wondering. Yeah, we never revisited ten. that. That's so many. You hit the mic. It took you this entire... <sighs> Um, Hazred is also on there. A few of the new cards. The Fervent. Uh, Giora is on there. I mean, just Sliver Overlord. Like, a bunch of really good commanders. Is Sliver Queen! what we went into. Sliver yeah. Queen. Um, Rafelos is the other one that I wanted to mention. She's a giant worm. Yeah. Oh, no, she's got, she's got little... She's got little baby She's got little, she's got little claws. Little, like... My neck is itchy! 
Help! I can't reach him. <laughs> I'm gonna love watching this back to see how well I pulled that off. <laughs> Probably not at all. No, not well. Anyway, at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, Rafelos is the last one that I wanted to mention. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Zer is the last one I wanted to mention. Zer? Zer, the, the agent of the nine. Oh, you don't play Destiny. <laughs> Never mind. Hey. Sorry. No, I don't play Destiny. Um, but yeah, Zer is one that I wanted to mention because I do like Zer. And he's a really good commander. Yeah, he is. That's um, true. His deck is kind of broken. All right. But yeah, that's basically it. I mean, there were a lot of others. Just name a commander. It's probably in there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, did yeah, anyone say, say uh, uh, oh, 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 no. I did the thing I always do. Uh, he steals. He steals cards. He exiles them. He puts them face down. He's from Kaladesh, and then you get to cast it. <laughs> Alex likes him. Starts with a G. Gaunty. Oh no, Gaunty is not in there. I resubmit my favorite. Gaunty. Gaunty's a good one. Gaunty, Lord of Luxury. He's a pretty cool card. He's super cheap right now. He's he like reminds me cents. of um the the Circus of Value. Welcome to the Circus of Value. Yep. Come back when you get some money, buddy. Bioshock, for ha, anybody that ha, doesn't get that. Ha, um, ha, you hated that game. <laughs> uh, yep. Let's start <laughs> a, an argument. <laughs> that's fine. I didn't hate it. I strongly You hated the it. last hour. Yep, that's true. If they took out the last hour, would you love it? Yeah, I'd, right. I'd be playing it right now, again. Yeah. Hopefully not screaming or peeing my pants. Yeah, you really didn't take those splicers too well. Oh, God. We're talking about Ugh. a game that's like super old now, but that's okay. No, I just played it. Yeah, for, for the, the first, first time. time. He didn't even know the plot twist. I, I, I am so amazed that you went this long without... I like, intentionally knowing. did not know the plot twist. Mm. Made it a point not it to learn out. it. Um, yeah. So, the question of the week for this week, though, uh, if you haven't already looked on Instagram, is what is the most confusing card in Magic? There are a lot of confusing cards. Very true. We have our guess, um, but we'll talk about that in the next episode. Very true. Uh, and we will take a tally of these and actually see which is the most confusing, as we usually do. Yeah. With favorites, we don't like to do that, but with best or most or something like that, we like to. So... That being said, guys, definitely go respond to the question of the week so we can talk about it. Yeah. Do that. Um, last thing. We have to thank our sponsor. Heck yeah, we, we do. We don't have Parks here to do his voice. Wait, uh, wait, wait. <clears throat> you got to intro me somehow. <clears throat> Will, who is our sponsor? Glad you asked, Kevin. It's Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I don't quite have the the deep booming yeah, voice. Yeah, he's got the he's got the voice behind. I hope I was animated enough though. That's pretty good. In Rock Hill, South Carolina, Lina, Lina, Lina. <laughs> Just across the border. Cards for order, this? order. Um, yeah, mine is Carnage Tyrant. What was mine? Sorry, Carnage Tyrant, Tyrant, Tyrant. tyrant. I don't remember what mine was. Opt. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't get it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I have no clue what mine was. I feel really bad now. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember either. I'm gonna look at the Ooh, list while you Vana. talk about your stuff. Um, so as far as limited, I got Vana Butcher of oh, Me- Butcher of crap. Megan. Yeah, that's definitely the card you take. Yep, Vigilance and Life Link for four, four for five. Attack, oh, pay seven life, is. destroy target non land permanent. Yep. Mine was a new cradle. Oh, which duh. I didn't get. Um, I got Captain Lannery Storm, which I mean I think is probably the pick. There you are- like Storm. There are a few other decent cards in the way of Sky Terror, which I think is an awesome. Do you drop. really take this though? I don't know. That's kind of what I'm wondering. Uh, Dark Nourishment Sorry. is pretty good. Um, it's a removal spell, and you gain like, new life. I like these. Yeah, that's good. I like this. Yeah, this is so nice of value. Hmm. I also like the Thrash of Raptors. Mm-hmm. That's just a good card. Um, yeah, don't take the um conquistador at first but still it's good yeah i wouldn't uh and i don't think i'd first pick sky terror honestly because i like removal it might be dark nourishment yeah that's because i really like that card um so that would probably be my pick mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i also have a duress which i do like duress but not in this format mm-hmm, it yeah. seems pretty bad in this format to be honest yeah i think i'd agree um in limited specifically i don't know about constructed but um you got a heck of a good mythic for limited yeah 
That's pretty he'll, awesome. He'll probably go in some constructed too. I think so. Control decks. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Super good. Um, yeah. Thank you again to our sponsor, Grand Slam, for uh, for providing the packs for us to do this. Um, I'm excited for the next Master Set, Iconic Masters, to come out so we very can do soon. an episode of that. So there's the Unset in December. Oh, yeah, the Unset. Oh, I'm excited about that, too. Have, um, you, have you seen the art for the lands? Yeah, it's sweet. Holy heavens. Yeah, it's pretty Heavens amazing. to Betsy. Yes. Betsy and her sister. Gretzy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Heads um, to Betsy and Gretzy. Uh, on that note. Uh, <laughs> Anything else you want to say? <laughs> no, I think we're going to get out of here. Uh, uh, my name is Kevin. My name is Gretzy. <laughs> and this is Minute Resolves. <laughs>